Hey guys, this is Patrick here. So you might be looking for answers why your laptop is performing so poorly. So you might be doing some light browsing on Google Chrome, uh, doing some slightly more demanding tasks such as video editing or even playing games, and your laptop's fan is just in overdrive and it's your laptop's just cooking your hands pretty much. Well, my laptop did exactly that. I'm running uh, an Asus ZenBook UX430. This is a relatively thin and light laptop, so packing a relatively decent amount of performance in this laptop does tend to make it overheat and make it more susceptible to overheating over time. Alright, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that um, you should look at while um, trying to troubleshoot your laptop and trying to figure out why your laptop is overheating. This is not a comprehensive list, but this is just some of the things that I've been thinking about while trying to fix uh, my laptop. And this video isn't intended to be a step-by-step -step guide to fixing your specific laptop, more on just giving you ideas on... Um, ways that you can potentially fix your laptop. Firstly, that's just to update your drivers. So um, I tend to update my graphics drivers. And what the drivers normally do is optimize uh, some of the more recent applications to your uh, hardware, which tends to improve performance. Next up, you want to check if you have any malware or unused applications. So if your hard drive is pretty packed or that your computer is just filled with uh, software that's not used, then this is definitely going to slow your laptop down. So you might want to remove most of these applications, just uh, run some uh, virus cleaning software or system cleaning software. You might even consider uh, doing a fresh uh, restart on your laptop, so installing a fresh copy of Windows, and that tends to fix quite a lot of issues that you're having. And lastly, this is the step that I went with, is um, if you have an older laptop, let's say it's one or two years uh, old or more, then the thermal paste in your laptops tend to degrade quite rapidly uh, over time. and because the quality of uh, thermal paste that they use um, in these um, laptops aren't that great, they don't tend to last very long. So replacing the thermal paste is t uh, most of the time a good option. However, this step is definitely uh, for slightly more advanced users as it is generally more hands-on. It will pretty much void your warranty and there is a definite risk of breaking your laptop if you don't know what you're so doing. So treat that as a warning and um, only do this if you're comfortable with opening up your laptop or if your laptop or if you've already done some of the steps that I've talked about and your laptop uh, performance isn't is still not performing to the standard that you want it to then maybe taking this risk is a good idea. All right so let's open up the laptop. Opening up the laptop there's going to be a couple of screws some of, some of which are hidden under the rubber feet. And in this particular case, I do have security screws, so I do have to have uh, specific screwdrivers with uh, this, this uh, bit that allows me to disassemble the laptop. Once the back cover is removed, it is really important that we disconnect the battery before we start messing around with the motherboard and the CPU. Once that's done, I would also press and hold the power button to make sure any residual charge is uh, released and it, your computer is now safe to operate. Now let's disconnect the fan and unscrew the heatsink. Notice that there are going to be some numbers on these screws. These numbers correspond to the order in which uh, the heatsink is screwed down onto the motherboard. So in order to remove it, we want to do it in descending order. So from the high numbers to the low numbers and remove it in that uh, order. And don't uh, remove the whole screw at once. Just uh, remove each screw just a bit, and over time, it should you should be able to lift all the screws off the motherboard at once. So time. now you have the heatsink removed. You want to scrape off most of this uh, thermal paste. It, most of the time, it's pretty dried up and uh, we pretty easy to remove. So I'll just get a plastic scraper and scrape off as much thermal paste as I can, and then use some isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean off the remaining uh, thermal paste before we apply the new thermal compound to uh, to the heat sink. And also now is a good chance to um, inspect the fan and get a brush or compressed air to just uh, clean out the fan and get rid of some of the dust. Now to reapply the thermal paste, I'm using uh, this Noctua thermal paste right here. This is a pretty good quality thermal paste. I do recommend uh, you to pick this one up if you don't have any idea of what thermal paste you want to use. And don't cheap out on getting some generic uh, unbranded thermal paste. Just get a good quality one so you don't have to do this uh, disassembly again in the future. So hopefully this will last at least uh, two or three years plus and by that time your laptop probably will be due for a replacement anyways. And also because this uh, is a better quality thermal paste I will um, help with the transfer of heat from the CPU to the heatsink as well as lasting longer which is always a good thing. Now what you want to do is adjust the paste 
um, to the size of the die. So if you have a larger CPU, then you want more thermal paste. If you have a smaller CPU, then you want less. So the amount I applied here is more than generous, and uh, you can use this as a reference. So anything more than this will pretty much be a bit too much. I think. Make sure you don't apply too much because the efficiency at which it transfers heat will actually start to diminish. So the performance will actually be degraded um, if you apply too much thermal paste. And also I recommend not to spread out the thermal paste. Just apply um, a small amount in the center of the die of the CPU or GPU and let the heat sink spread out the thermal paste itself. And once you put, once you applied the heat sink, don't lift it back up and check if it uh, if it's spread properly. Just uh, leave it as it is and just uh, put the screws back on because you don't want air bubbles to be trapped in between the thermal compound. So now what you want to do is follow the numbers and tighten down the screws in that order. But make sure you don't tighten them down all the way just yet. Uh, just uh, do a couple of screws on each uh, each corner and then go go over it again and then just hand tighten it you don't need to make you don't have to um, secure it uh, secure the heatsink on extremely tight just make sure it uh, is secure it's on securely but you don't have to uh, tighten it too much because if you tighten it too much you might actually damage the mother next you want to reconnect the battery to the motherboard put the cover back on but not screw on just yet and power up the laptop to see if it's working well if everything's running well and it seems to be uh, doing what you're expecting it to do. Then I would uh, use get the screws and screw up, screw on the back cover, and uh, check the performance. So just from this little mod, the thermals on my laptop have improved quite uh, significantly. And because um, the laptop is now more efficient at removing heat and not generating as much heat, the battery life will actually improve on my laptop as well. Overall performance has improved. So using Google Chrome or even using less demanding applications or even scrolling through the news, the laptop's not kicking in the fan as much. You can see uh, some of the comparisons uh, when I try to launch Back for Blood on my laptop and the performance has uh, definitely improved noticeably and my hands don't feel like they're on top of an oven now while trying to play this game. So would I recommend uh, doing this mod? I think so. So if you're confident in uh, doing this mod, then I'll go right ahead and just buy some thermal paste and uh, do carry out this mod. Or if your laptop is uh, performing so poorly that, and you have nothing to lose, then hey, uh, I would give it a shot. And definitely go on YouTube and search up your laptop's model and search for a disassembly guide, watch it a few times, and then uh, follow the instructions and um, disassemble your laptop because that's exactly what I did as well. So I hope you guys like this video. I will be coming out with a uh, drag chain video for the Ender 3 V2 as my next video. So that'll be out soon. So if you guys liked it, like this video, then like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on Patch Attacks.